So we, we got a session drummer in for a couple of gigs we had lined up. And we were playing one night at the Old Field Hotel in, in, in Greenfield. All I remember is I was standing on stage getting ready to take a break when a, 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 a gingerbread man appeared in the audience in front of me, looking up at me with his great big puppy dog brown eyes. He wanted to be a beach boy, so he bought some hydrogen peroxide and bleached his hair. It came out bright orange. And he came up and, with all the arrogance in the world, said, I hear you're looking for a drummer. Well, I'm much better than the one you've got. He sat down. Peter starts off the pick screeching down the string. Down, down, and it gets into a very heavy riff. All of a sudden, it's like a jet engine has started up <laughs> at the back of me. It was like magic. All of a sudden, it, everything worked. We were just astonished. This kid was the missing link, and, and it was obvious from the first minute of him playing with us. The whole dance floor stopped and started looking. It was extraordinary. He didn't watch drummers. He was the only drummer I know that you'd watch. Moon was a star. He was a shooting star, that's what he was. He was clearly an alcoholic, an addict, a sex addict. <laughs> On one hand, he was this lunatic who, you know, couldn't wait to get on a drum kit and just explode with it. And on the other hand, he was very quiet, saddened person. He clearly had tremendous esteem issue problems. He was a complex little ball of difficulty. What's, what's your normal routine after a show like this? You should leave and get drunk. He wasn't like that as a boy, that's what I can't understand. I mean, he, he always did as he was told. He was very quiet, I no, had no problem with him at all. He was a, a good boy. By the time he was 16, Moon was playing American surf music in a band called The Beachcombers. The Beachcombers was the first band that I remember him uh, having at home and setting up in the front room. He liked The Beach Boys. I f didn't like them. <laughs> You know, and they would sing away. But he liked to do those backing vocals. You know, the girly backing vocals in a lot of the songs. The other thing that's really important, of course, is that Keith was a, a very lyrical drummer. <laughs> Keith was like an orchestra on the drums. It wasn't a time drop like dum, dum, dum. It was like all around the kit. Moon was doing things that just made us all work 100% harder. Not faster, not slower, 100% harder. In late April 1964, he joined the Detours and started playing the blues. Hey, fellas, have you heard the news? When you've got a 12-bar sequence, can become monotonous. Mooney had a very short attention span when it came to boredom. He started to double up the beat. And that led to Pete doubling the guitar. It led John to play more jazzy bits in between. And from that, what what we became famous for evolved. And that's when The Who started to have its own identity. We played the blues, but we'd put our own stamp on it. 